It's the people versus the tech giants. This phone is worth nothing. Top brands side by side. Unfortunately, it was not Both the garbage. Over 3,000 Canadians share repair nightmares. Which brand and device breaks down the most? $1,300 for a phone is ridiculous. And how to get the deal you deserve. This is your marketplace. We're setting up a tech repair clinic to try to fix all those broken down devices you depend on. I was trying to charge it up and it just failed to charge. It just doesn't boot. It won't even turn on. When you open it up and try and start it up, it turns gray and has funky red stripes on it. Smartphones, laptops, tablets, we're revealing the truth about nearly every top brand. I've got a Samsung cell phone as well as an Acer laptop. I think it was about fifteen. About fifteen hundred dollars. And plus, this time. cost me another two, like another hundred dollars. You got a whole pile of things there. I do, David. I do. While we put these three repair pros to the test, we're testing the tech giants with a one-of-a-kind national survey. We're asking more than three thousand Canadians to share their stories, revealing which brands break down more than others. I'm still your dream girl. They market slick products, make big promises like oops resistance, and claim long battery life. But do they deliver? How long should they last? Powerful and efficient. It really is the most annoying issue to deal with. And to get the inside scoop on whether our favorite device makers may be stiffing us, we're calling in a consumer rights hero. Only hiccup? The border is closed, but that's not going to stop us. We're in Canada, but that's the U.S. because the fight against the multi-trillion dollar tech giants, the biggest fighter, she's an American. First up, though, is our survey on smartphones. Top sellers going head to head. It's Apple versus Samsung. I've always been a Samsung guy. The Samsung S20 phone, when I got it out of the package, it started experiencing problems. We're starting in Bracebridge, Ontario, with roofer Jason Boulder. The problem I had with it was that the moment I started it up, it was the excessive boot time, which was really strange. I started dropping media calls. The phone got excessively hot. So hot, Jason says, the screen cracked. Were you outside in the blazing sun? No. He's now having to keep his phone out of the heat, a roofer who can't take his phone on the roof. Not answering calls, from potential customers. How much is it worth to you right now? This phone is worth nothing. Here's the thing. Our survey says Jason is like most of us. Almost three out of four have had at least one device break down in just the past five years. And here's a stunner. 65% have had multiple device breakdowns in that time. The last one is uh, the most difficult. For a two-year-old two iPhone. It is also giving us this blue screen, the blue screen of death, I guess, basically. I have an iPhone XR, yep. and the screen is all cracked. Yeah, I can come up and take a look. Lots of repair nightmares, but wait for it. Jason's Samsung S20 Plus 5G is only two weeks old, still under warranty and a 15-day return policy. But both Samsung and the store refuse to take it back and say these problems are all Jason's fault. It's just within days of getting it. This is in within less than 24 hours of getting the phone. Wow. How much that phone cost? This phone is an $1,800 phone. That's a lot of money. In our survey, there are 563 reports about Samsung phones. You mind if we come with you to tell us? Uh, for sure. Jason is going to the store where he bought his phone less than two weeks ago. While he's seeking a resolution for his Samsung, we want to know how his experience stacks up to Apple. <laughs> Please enter your PIN, followed by the pound key. Ricardo Borgia owns a three-year-old iPhone 7, but the audio only works if it's connected to Bluetooth. Right now, I'm listening through my uh, car, and I would be talking through the microphone of my car. So this is a pretty expensive headset. Welcome. Plus, the battery drains really fast. I'm going to a repair shop for my phones. I went to Apple and now I wanted to get a you know, like a third party opinion, like an independent opinion to see if they have anything different to say. 
Our survey says of all the high tech we own, smartphones break down more than any other device. After pleading with the shop, Jason's not doing any better with a nearly new but broken device. They're still saying it's still going to be my problem that I still have to be out of pocket cost for it because they're claiming that it was the user fault. In this first round, Jason with Samsung and Ricardo with Apple both have tough tech problems. But when we look at the device market shares and crunch the numbers, our months long investigation reveals more of you have had Samsung break down. So Apple wins this round. But it doesn't feel like that for Ricardo, who's leaving the repair shop disappointed. The best thing that they can do is to just outright replace the phone, give me a new one for the cost of $405. Why is it so hard to fix our phones? Apple told him the same thing, forced to replace instead of repair. That is something that, 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 that kind of sucks as a pattern as a whole. Like if you look at consumer electronics, is that they're making them less and less repairable at home. You're seeing people talk about it, but nobody's taking action. We asked Apple to come on camera to talk about Ricardo's experience and our survey results, but they decline. They do tell us they have a new repair program that's making it easier to get phones fixed. As for Samsung, they say they're going to look into Jason's situation and tell us they believe their Galaxy products are some of the industry's most durable. Many of you tell us electronic devices are generally tough to fix or cost too much to repair. That's why we're heading all the way to the border itself to find out why. Here we are in these COVID times, yep. an American, a Canadian, we can talk. But Across not in each other's country. <laughs> yeah. Keeping to our own sides. But Gay Gordon Byrne is always on the side of consumers. She's the head of an American movement to fight for better rights. Amazingly enough, repairs are now roughly 50% or more of the cost to replace the device. <laughs> and in her words, that means it's time for a rebellion to get big tech companies to be more responsible. How will you know if you've won this fight? Uh, when, when we get a law passed. And what's that law look like? It'll be a law that says, in order to do business in our state or in our province, you, Mr. Manufacturer, must provide fair and reasonable price access to parts, tools, diagrams, manuals, and the software. When it comes to slow, buggy phones, sometimes the issue is that operating system. It's the software behind yep. it. Yep. And the manufacturer just won't update it anymore. What is that doing for consumers? Well, it's obsoleting the equipment before it's physically obsolete. It's a tactic. We're getting to the point where we don't own the things that we think we do, and we're winding up getting into a position where we can't keep them going. We literally have to go buy new ones and throw away the old ones because we're not allowed either by design or by policy to fix them. Time for round two, laptops. Two of Canada's top selling brands, it's HP versus Acer. You're right, it's definitely uh, stressful. Back at our repair clinic with pros Ryan, Paul, and Alvin, Melchior is desperate for a fix. How's your laptop? Uh, finicky. Finicky. The USB ports, all four, will work sometimes. They don't work other times. And the battery doesn't hold the charge anymore. Melchior's dad only watched YouTube on this Acer laptop, so it's been barely used. It's not working at all, like it won't turn on or what? Sometimes it does work, sometimes it doesn't. Joanna's come to us with her HP laptop, a crucial but failing tool for her family of six. So having a laptop must be important for you, homework and everything else. I don't have any more laptops. Kids are using my iPhone. Why not just replace it? Well, my daughter is hearing impaired and all the expenses basically ate the budget. And so with a flood some years back, everything that we saved went out. Because of all these expenses of what? Yes, it all adds up. So costly, it's either a new laptop or hearing aids for her daughter. It's actually really important to this family to try to get it running again. Okay. Problems with the battery, problems with the display. You up for taking a look? Sure. Joanna and Melchior say their laptops are both 10 years old. And our research shows most Canadians keep their laptops between three and five years. We brought this computer in. Everything boots fine. 
the issues are the battery. Ryan, one of our tech pros, tells Melchior he can buy a new battery and check Acer's software updates to see if that might fix it, but no guarantees. We reach out to Acer and their fix? They'll give him a discount if he buys a new computer. Well, let's see if I can see what's going on. But he's not giving up on Joanna's HP laptop. And her family needs it. Do you have any ideas with this? Uh, yeah. What's up with it? Round two is wrapping up. Joanna with HP and Melchior with Acer, both with busted laptops. When it comes to those two brands, our analysis says Canadians have experienced more breakdowns with HP over the last five years. They won't come on camera, but in a statement say to us they disagree with our findings. They point to their own research, which suggests some of their newest laptops have the lowest failure rates. They also say they care about sustainability. You're right. When it first starts up, you can see the HP logo. Very, very dim. Very, very dim. And then it goes dead. HP may have lost the face off with Acer, but our techs haven't given up the battle with Joanna's laptop. What? Nope. Back with our repair squad, Ryan's struggling, but suddenly catches a break. This is your computer, and it seems to be working. Got it running? Joanna is heading home, working computer in hand. Wow. No guarantee, though, it'll last. And when we tell HP about her issues, they promise to send her a new laptop. She's happy, but survey says eight out of 10 of us have devices at home sitting around unused because they're broken, outdated, or obsolete. They are trying to churn these things out at a very low price point, and then when something does break, it's hard to get into the device just to be able to fix it. Are you saying that they're basically building it as cheaply as possible, and as a result, it's really shortening the lifespan. Absolutely, yes. It's time for round three, tablets. Apple versus everyone else. Stacked this way because Apple dominates the market. Where we're going now, there's no big repair clinic. We're north, way north, to hear about tech troubles and tablets. We don't have IT techs. I have to travel 100 kilometers to Yellowknife. We're in the Northwest Territories, one of the toughest spots to get hands-on help for devices. My three-year-old grandson and my nine-year-old, they're fighting for this iPad, so they eventually fought over it and they dropped it. Marjorie Black has an Apple iPad, Canada's top-selling tablet. She's driven 90 minutes from Beshiko to see if Keegan Payne can fix it at his Yellowknife shop. Uh, it should take about an hour and a half. Marjorie needs the repair. Her grandkids cracked her screen, and she can't afford to replace the tablet. Marjorie doesn't care about, you know, the, the fanciest, newest features, and a lot of people don't. They just want the device they own to work. As she's waiting to find out what happens, time for another ranking. In the battle between Apple and every other tablet, when we crunch the numbers, iPads win. But Marjorie sure doesn't feel like a winner. And sorry to tell tablet owners, compared to all other devices, experts tell us tablets are the toughest to repair. They say you might want to save your money. In Yellowknife, Keegan's done as much as he can. Unfortunately, there wasn't much I could do. I tried, but now it is goes to the garbage. So Marjorie is going to have to trash it, adding to more than 750,000 tons of e-waste in Canada a year. When we tell Apple about Marjorie, they say they care about the environment and aim to make all their devices from recycled or renewable materials. They should stand by their product. They should think of their consumers. It's a huge fight. We're not done yet. There's one brand that tops our breakdown list on your marketplace. We're taking the tech giants to task in a one-of-a-kind national survey to see which brands you say break down the most. A tablet? Yes. Yeah, it's of no use to you now. Correct. We're charged for about two seconds, so we try to wiggle it a bit. Right. And it just died. It shouldn't die after two years. Yeah. At our expert repair clinic, the techies, Ryan, Paul, and Alvin, certainly see what we hear from you. Troubleshooting tech? is tough. We really want to make sure we haven't damaged anything, right? 
Just like brain surgery. Yeah, just like brain surgery, yeah. right? This American consumer advocate says making repairs so challenging is just how the tech giants generally operate. It's a huge fight. It's a huge fight. Is it acceptable? Well, it would be acceptable if people dropped stuff and then they got them fixed. Or if they, or if the batteries ran out and then they could get the batteries replaced because accidents happen, right? But when you can't get them fixed, that's a real problem. And that brings us to an issue we hear about again and again in our survey. Batteries are an issue we hear about a lot. I can't see I'm surprised. Echoed in our repair clinic. This battery. Batteries. Battery. Battery. This is my giant iPad Pro. Doesn't hold a battery charge, um, even when it's plugged in. Some batteries, they just, like, there's some of them, when they get below 50%, they'll just stop working. Our survey says one in four devices has a battery issue. So the battery life starts to slow down. Um, it won't hold a charge for as long as it used to. And when it comes to smartphones, it's one in three. Plus, just as many smartphones are also slowing down. Experts tell us that's often caused by a battery problem. It's almost like they build the batteries not to last. That's what it feels like. Let's talk about batteries. They want to make repair the incident that takes you back to the store. They don't want you fixing something and replacing the battery and getting another two years of life out of it. They want you to go back to the store and buy a new one. It's a business model. What's it been like for you carrying out this battle? Take $28 trillion in market cap and say, we're going to fight them, and then wonder why it's hard. <laughs> and speaking of fights, remember Ricardo? He still wants to fix his iPhone 7 because he wants to do his part for the environment. But he's facing an uphill battle. Hello, CBC. So I'm back from the Apple store. We get this surprise message from him. He's looking into Quebec's warranty laws and finds out if a product doesn't last as long as another just like it, the manufacturer might have to repair it free, replace it, or refund it. It's when I spoke about the um, uh, consumer protection laws here in Quebec that the things seem to take another speed or another protocol. When it comes to consumer protection laws across Canada, experts tell us Quebec's are the strongest and Ricardo plans to fight for his rights. He makes a lot of calls like this and had to learn about the law on his own. Makes you wonder if companies want consumers to know their rights for replacements. They're sneaky, you know, if, if we don't know our, our rights, then they don't tell us uh, that we're entitled to have a, a replacement phone at no charge. They would have charged me for $400. In the end, Ricardo prevails. Apple replaces his phone. But Ricardo might not have been able to get a replacement if he lived outside of Quebec, because the laws aren't the same. I hope these laws uh, become a standard in all of Canada. I'm grateful that they exist in Quebec. Time for the great reveal, which brand breaks down most? I wish I'd done my research before. And will the tech giants talk? Do you have a story you think Marketplace should investigate next? Tell us all about it on email, Twitter, and Facebook. It's the people versus the tech giants. We ask more than 3,000 Canadians about their tech repair nightmares. Time to unmask the device and brand our analysis shows has broken down the most. That title goes to LG Smartphones. Well, I used it for maybe about two months. And Lori Hood in Canmore, Alberta, is the not-so-proud owner of one of them. I started using the phone, and it wasn't holding a charge very well. Her smartphone came with problems. The battery wasn't charging, the phone overheating, and then it cracked. But the certified repair shop says if she wants it fixed, she has to pay. I wish I'd done my research before. Um, I didn't. I just bought the phone, and I'm not blaming myself, but that's really a drag. $1,300 for a phone is ridiculous. In the end, after months of fighting, Lori says LG covers the repair. It took me four months, and I would say, mm, I think it would be fair to say about 20 hours of emails and on the phone. 
We tell LG about Lori's experience, and they say they're going to look into it. And when we tell them about their place on our survey, they say they stand behind the quality of their devices and claim they don't limit parts for phone repairs. They say they want to make it easier for customers to get their phones fixed. After a long day, our repair clinic is winding down. In the end, our technicians looked at more than 15 devices. Only two go home repaired. Time to share our findings with the Consumer Technology Association. They represent a lot of the tech companies, and for weeks we've been asking for an interview. Please leave a message after the tone. There are some experts who are actually saying, this is all deliberate, that device makers are, are churning out devices and making them cheaply so that consumers are essentially forced to buy new rather than being able to repair or keep them for a longer period of time. They never call us back. Please try your call again later. Thank you. OK, not getting any answers there either. But consumers want answers. Many are tired of what they see as the runaround. I would repair this myself if I could, if I had the tools. I've been sending more emails and communications. And after months of fighting, Jason tells Samsung He's been talking to us. I did finally receive a phone call. And bingo, he gets his phone fixed, no charge. It's repaired, so yay. But as for how all this played out. I think they should stand behind their policies. I think they should uh, think of their consumers. What's your message to the, the manufacturers out there? If they are going to charge the amounts they're charging, which I feel are exorbitant in the first place. They should stand by their product and treat their customers better, you know? Inside Canada's hospitals. We're gonna be burning through this PPE pretty quickly. A national spot check. The only reason I haven't gotten sick, it's PPE. Where does our PPE come from? I'm devastated looking at this. Canada is complicit. Next week on Your Marketplace.